stop texting first and making plans and see how many dead plants you have been watering. Trust me, you're about to see. I have been feeling like I give way too much and I don't get enough back. And when I started feeling that way, I realized it wasn't that I was doing too much for my friends. It was just that they weren't doing enough. Before we really dive into this video you might get triggered if you feel that you actually may be the one that's a toxic friend you yourself might get a little triggered but before that feeling kicks in remind yourself that it's okay if there are some things in this video that you feel like you do it's all right because at least you know you're realizing it it's step one Understanding it, step two. Three, you change it. You become a better friend. You should not feel deprived of care and love in your friendships. Of course, as we've gotten older, life gets harder and it's harder to maintain friendships. You can't be there for someone 24 seven. We are getting older, we have responsibilities. It's almost impossible to be there for someone 24 seven. And if that is something that you expect, then you're the toxic friend. However, your friend should be able to be there for you when you're going through something. They could call you back. They could call you and see how you're doing. They could send a quick text, hey, how's everything going? Maybe your friends are going through something and I get it, it's a possibility, but that's their responsibility to communicate that with you. You should not be sitting there thinking, I'm going through all this and this person knows, yet they've never reached out. I don't care what you're going through at this point because if you don't care to tell me, I can't sit there and guess. So you should never be sitting there guessing, oh, well, well, maybe, maybe they're just going through something. Maybe they just don't care. Why? We're too old. We're way too old to be playing these guessing games. No, it is their responsibility to tell you how they feel. If they are going through something, they're unable to be there for you. They should be telling you that the same way you are telling them what you're going through. Now, those friends that remain silent, they don't ask how you're doing. They don't check up on you, especially when they know that you're going through something. They simply do not care. If it's been weeks or even a week, like a full seven days and your friend has not checked up on you after you've told them that you're going through something. I'm sorry, but they genuinely don't care. You can't convince me otherwise. Like I said, if they're going through something, they have to let you know that they're going through something. You are not going to sit there and guess. No way, Jose. Let's break this video down in chapters. As always, if you want to skip through certain parts, you may, but like I always say, Stick here for the whole video for it to make sense. Chapter one, friendships. Chapter two, signs of a toxic friend. Chapter three, distancing yourself. Let's get into chapter one, friendships. As we get older, we don't lose friends. We realize who our real ones are. And this quote is obviously from Pinterest. I'm sure you guys have come across it on Pinterest from my Pinteresty girls. You guys know what's up. They always have the best quotes. But this quote, I really wholeheartedly believe. We don't lose anyone that is meant to be on this journey with us. Sometimes they're only here for a certain period of time. And real friends, you don't lose because your real friends are your soul level friends. They are part of your soul family. You're not losing them. They're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Why is it so important for us to have a good friend by our side? Life's hard. Life is so hard. There are things that we go through and having a good friend next to you it helps. Why should we have to sit there and go through tough times alone when there's something called a friendship? There are beautiful friendships out there to make with people that you can connect with and you can feel less lonely when things happen and you have a support system. Think about all the hard times you've had. Imagine if you didn't have anyone with you. You were able to call a friend. You, were, you may be able to call someone like your mom who you see a friend in, which I do. I'm really close to my mom. To have that companionship is helpful. I still remember the day that my husband's visitor visa got refused for Canada and I was so upset 
And the only thing that really helped me was the people around me. My mom, my friends checking up on me, making sure I'm good. Even my partner, and a real friend can take away that sadness and really be there for you when you need it. When I was thinking about marriage and like the type of guy I want to marry, there's one thing that was a top priority on my list and it was I need a man who can hold me down when things get tough. The same thing goes for friends, you guys. You need friends that can support you, that they can be there for you when shit goes down. It's important to surround yourself with people that are there for you. A lot of people are just want to be there for the hee hee ha ha's. It's fun to have some fun friends to go out with, to do this and this. But you also need solid friends. Your friends should be able to give you both sides. They should also be there for you when shit goes down. Friendships help your mental health and overall happiness. When you're around such good people, you feel good. It's a transfer of energy. And when someone is pouring into you, you're able to pour back into them. You're also able to keep your own cup full because some of that cup is us, but some of it is the people around us the good relationships we have. I have friends that are no longer in my life. It happens, you grow out of people, they grow out of you. You just change so much as you're growing up because you're also getting to know yourself. You're no longer the same person. Or sometimes you just realize that this person's not putting in the same effort as you. And that's not fair to you. And for me, that's what happened. I realized like I had a best friend and she would never put in the same effort as me. She would never do all that for me. She would never drive down out of her way to hang out with me, but I would. And I realized that I needed someone who did the same for me. So I've been there where I've had shitty friends, where I've had to realize like this is not something that's meant for me. Thankfully, my circle now is very fulfilling, full of amazing friends. They have never yelled at me. They have never disrespected me. They don't lie to me. I don't have to walk all over eggshells with them. They're there for me when I need them. They support me when I need to be supported. They correct me when I'm wrong. After years of losing friends, I realize that these are bare minimum requirements to be my friend. I honestly love my friends so much. They show me the light when I can't see at the end of that tunnel. Chapter two, signs of toxic friends. Listen, I am an expert on calling people out on their bullshit. I wasn't always like that. I was always that girl that was just scared to say anything because that's just the way I'm raised. I'm raised in a brown family where you shouldn't speak your mind. It has gotten a lot better now, but like especially when we were younger, we weren't really able to just say whatever we wanted to say because we saw our moms do the same or our aunts do the same, especially the women in our family kind of keep quiet when they were being done wrong. So by looking at that, we just assumed that we had to be the same way. And I had to change that because I'm like, and that's not me. That's giving me a lot of anxiety. That disrupts my sleep. So why should I keep all that in? If you do me wrong, you're gonna know you did me wrong. I feel people's toxicity from a mile away because I've been through so much in life that I just know when someone is just doing you wrong, when someone is just not treating you good, when someone is toxic. Toxic sign one, lack of support. When my friends are supporting me, there is nothing anyone can do. I won't be brought down. That is top tier. That feeling of support is everything. When you have that type of support in your life. It is hard not to believe in yourself because everyone else around you is believing in you. So it's hard to not measure up to that. You naturally start to believe in yourself. When your friend is lacking when it comes to supporting you, like DJ Khaled always says, they don't want you to win. They don't wanna see you win. He wasn't lying. They really don't wanna see you win. If you post a picture on Instagram, your friend is always watching your stories, your friend is always on Instagram, she's always sending you memes, but she doesn't like and comment your pictures. I'm not saying every single photo because I know with the algorithm, things are different. They're never liking any of your photos or commenting on your photos. That is some weird behavior. Especially when you have a business or you're an influencer, it's weird of your friends not to support you in that way. I always found it weird. I used to have friends like that. I'm not friends with them anymore, but they would never like or comment on my stuff and they would never publicly you know, hang out with me because I think they just didn't want people to like talk shit about them that, oh, they're they're hanging out with Granite Dessange and oh my God, like, you know, and this is before OF. Imagine now, imagine those friends now, they'd be judging the crap out of me. It would be so different. I don't have friends like that. And I'm so thankful because you have to love me for who I am. You have to see what's inside. You have to see what's in my heart, you know? And if you don't see what's in my heart, then you're not really there for the right reasons. It's just weird energy coming from a friend. And honestly, it could be for so many different reasons. 
It could be they're insecure in their own life. They're jealous of your life. They're jealous of you. Like I said, they could be embarrassed to just claim you publicly because of what other people might think about you or say about you. Your real friends support your business. They support your wishes. They support your dreams. And they support you when you are having a good or a bad time. It doesn't matter. They'll be there at your wedding but they'll also be there when you're losing someone so important to you. They'll also be there when you get fired from your dream job. They will be there for you when that guy cheats on you and breaks your heart. If they have money, they will buy from your business. They'll listen to your rants. They'll listen to your rants. They'll make time to come out to your events and special things that you're hosting. The, and they will be there for you when shit hits the fan. Toxic sign two, not being open about their communication or their feelings with you. This is a big ick for me. Because come on, we are grown and I can't read your damn mind, ma'am. I cannot. I had a friend. She was my best friend. I still care about her. If she ever called me, I would be there for her. I do root for her, but privately and not publicly. And let me tell you why. Because she chose not to tell me things when she was feeling things about me inside or about our friendship. And that can destroy a friendship. Basically, we were all on a trip when we started noticing things just being a little different with this friend. One of the friends asked my ex-friend, being like, hey, like, is something going on? You're acting really weird. And she's like, yeah, it's actually something you said. My friend goes, what did I say? She goes, never mind, just forget I even said anything. And my friend's like, well, you brought it up. You might as well tell me because then we can fix things. And she's like, no, I would just rather not. She was acting weird for months before that, now that I think about it. Something really big happened to me in my life, and I realized she was barely there for me. And this was back in 2019, I think. That was the year, yeah, 2019. And I remember just thinking, why is she being so weird? When that happened, I was like, there's no point of talking to someone who doesn't care to tell you what they're feeling they're keeping all this inside they have all these things about you inside of them but they don't care to tell you how they feel that is so weird to me i can't fix something if i don't even know what there is to fix like you didn't even give me an opportunity to fix something it just takes way too much energy dealing and guessing that oh what's wrong with this person when we could easily just talk about it. If someone truly cares, they will let you know what's wrong because they don't want to lose you from something so small and start holding all this resentment towards you. So we're grown and we can sit there and talk about things. Toxic sign three. They're always trying to steal your spotlight. Always want to one up you. And most of the time, these friendships are so competitive. You always feel like you are in a competition. They always want to be the center of attention. It's your bachelorette and everyone's enjoying you and celebrating you and your relationship. Yet this one friend just wants to talk about her relationship and how amazing it is. It's your wedding day. They don't show up in all the events except one, even though they gave you so many false promises how they're going to be there at every single event. But they don't even show up except to one event. You have a baby and they come by and all they're doing is talking about all these fears and things that can go wrong when you have a baby. Like just focusing on the negative aspect of having a baby rather than celebrating the fact that you just gave birth. These kinds of friends are always taking away your special moments in life. One thing I know about this kind of friend is they are low-key jealous of you. I don't care if it doesn't feel like it, they are. They're envious of you. They want these types of moments so bad that they are ready to grasp yours. The reason they're always gonna be in the center of attention is because they have low self-esteem. They want people to always like them. And you know, a lot of these people don't actually realize that they're taking away your moment because it's so normal to them. They do this all the time. You need friends that want you to enjoy your wedding, your, you having a baby, all these big things, your first day of business, all this stuff is so serious and so important and a lot of friends downplay it. Toxic sign four, a friend who always gossips. You know what they say, if they're gossiping to you, they're gossiping about you. And I get it, it's fun to sip a little tea here and there. I totally get it. I, myself, am a little guilty of it. Not fully because I feel like I have cut down the gossiping shit to a lot. But sometimes when it's a friendly little tea, I don't mind it. I like the type of gossip that isn't hurtful. You know that one friend that you know you'll call them because you know they know everything about everyone? They have the tea on everyone? That's not a good sign. I sometimes think that a person who is constantly gossiping about others maybe feels like no one listens to them if they don't have anything important to say. Sometimes I kind of feel bad that they feel that way, but it's something that 
they have to work on themselves for because I think I had a period in my life in high school where I felt like I needed to tell them something interesting for them to like me. So I can relate in that sense. But as we get older, it's our responsibility to change that because that's actually a very bad thing to do and you're hurting people in the process. Gossipers love to gossip, so they don't care who they're gossiping about. And that is scary to me. I wouldn't be able to trust someone who is always gossiping to me because I know that they will use the information I give them about my life to go and tell others. Truthfully, spreading gossip, I think, is a very mean and hurtful thing to do. And even if it is true, I feel like it's such private information. Like, sometimes I'll hear about stuff and I'm like, that is so private. I honestly don't like mean people and I think sometimes gossiping is mean. So I have distanced myself a lot from gossipers. Remember that you need good people to have a good, fulfilling life around you. Signs that These are just some of the signs that I could remember on the top of my head, but... I'm sure there are so many more toxic signs. A quick Google search. Welcome to chapter three, distancing yourself. By now, you know if you have a toxic friend in your life. You might actually be sitting there thinking, is this worse than toxic? Because now I got you thinking about your friends and you realize that maybe these things are happening or maybe you're the toxic one. So to change yourself, that's a whole different video. But how to distance yourself from the friends that you realize aren't really your friends, let me let you know. It'll suck. It sucks to let go of friends. It really does. We become attached to them. Even the bad ones, it sucks to let go of sometimes. But in the long run, it's a great thing. But the one thing I will tell you to comfort you and also know that this is the truth, when you let go of certain people in your life, you're making more room for the people that are really meant to be in your life. I always say this. Let's say there's a seat. No one else can take that seat if someone's sitting on it. So in order for them to actually get up, you have to distance yourself for someone else to come in. Also essential for you to boss up and respect yourself. Distance yourself from any friend that's just not good for you. Because they're really a liability for your mental and emotional health. We are in our boss babe era, okay? We're not here to let undeserving people take up that space. That space is meant for people that are deserving of your love, of your care, of your attention because they are giving it that to you. How do we distance ourselves from these friends? For one, get freaking turned off. When I am turned off, there is nothing you can do to change my mind because I have the ick now. It's too late for me. I naturally stop showing interest when I'm turned off because I'm just like, you no. I'm like in this realization of how toxic you are, how horrible you are to me, how bad you are for me. So now I'm like, no, I don't want to hang out with you. Get turned off by their behavior. Like, it's not cute. Stop making plans with them. You don't have to make plans with them. You don't have to feel bad because they don't feel bad when they treat you like that. So you don't have to feel bad for not reaching out, for not making plans. Or if you like confrontation, you can let them know you don't want to see them. If you have the energy for that, if you have a space for that, let them know that, hey, like this is how I feel. I don't want to be your friend anymore. I don't want to see you anymore. Take forever to respond. Don't make them so important in your life that they realize like, oh, I don't think we're really that close anymore. Stop telling them your problems. They don't deserve to know what's going on in your life if they're already not a good friend. Because if they don't even care, then what's the point of telling them? Only real friends deserve to know what's going on so they can help you through it, so they can talk to you about it. You can trust them. You can vent. But telling someone who just doesn't really care is like wasting your time. Toxic friend genuinely won't care because they have so many other things that are going on in their heads. Now, when, when you do all these things, be fully prepared that there might be a confrontation. They might actually straight up ask you, hey, is something wrong? You know, they might just start to wonder, like, I feel like this person has really distanced themselves. What's happening? And if they care enough, they might actually ask. And you will know if it is something that you can actually fix with them or not. If you can give them another chance or not. You know, if you can talk to them about how you feel, or you might just actually be like, you know what, no, like I'm just done. And you can be like, no, no, everything's good. And you let it be. I've met, a, I've met a lot of girls that were my friends and turned out they were all so selfish. They didn't actually care that much about me. They just wanted to take, 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 take. I would put so much energy in these friends and they would give me like 5% back. And I really don't do things so that I can get it back. Like, I really don't think like, oh, I'm going to get it back and that's why I'm doing it. I don't even keep tabs on things that I do. Like my other friends, when I'm complaining about a friend, they they remind me what I do for this friend. I'm like, oh, like, oh, wow. Like, I'm actually a really good friend because I forget what I do for you because I don't do it to keep tabs. However, I do notice when someone doesn't try at all or care at all. Even last month, I realized a pattern. I would go out of my way for my friends and cousins and I would do all these little things and I realized no one ever does it for me. Nobody ever invites me out. No one ever takes the initiative to actually make 
make plans. It's always me. Not nobody, but like certain people in my groups I realized would never do that for me. Just right before this week, I was going through a really terrible time and I remember I Snapchatted like a few of my friends groups just telling them what's going on and I'm like so stressed in it that like a lot of my friends called me the next day or sent me like a huge essay or just like just checked up on me. But there were a few handful of friends that didn't. I just saw that snap and ignored me, didn't even reply to the snap. And I thought that was so not okay. And I just, I remember sitting there thinking like, you have time to open all these snaps and listen to them, but you don't have time to reply. And I know life gets busy, but come on, your friend can send you a text, a quick text, come on. They can make time for you if they wanted to. Nobody is that busy. But that's just one example of the five things that happened to me last month because I feel like last month was the month that God was really trying to show me that boundaries need to be stronger than they really ever were. People will take advantage of me and I show up way too much for the people that don't show up enough for me. So I think I needed a reality check. So that's exactly what God gave me by putting me in the same situation and same feelings over and over last month, multiple times. But I promised myself that I will only focus on the people that really are good friends and focus on people that really matter to me and that, you know, reciprocate my energy. So listen to me, my little love bug, you are an amazing friend. You are kind, you are sweet, you care, you try, you show up you support and i'm so sorry that you're experiencing such garbage friends you deserve so much better in fact you deserve a friend just like yourself don't dim your light and feel bad that you're experiencing this this is a part of life this happens so that there's other people that can come into your life and show you what a friend really is you have so much coming for you so make sure you make space for it since i let go of my toxic friends i am so much happier i am so much more content it affects your life in so many different ways I hope you guys enjoyed this video of toxic friends. Please comment below if you have any ideas of what you guys want to hear next. And these are some of the videos that are actually requested that I've been doing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this channel. I will see you guys next Monday. Love you guys.